What's up, fam? Extraordinary Life with Elijah. And today, Jamin is my extra and I am the ordinary. Jamin and I, we met at the hospital here March 1st, 2022 at 5.15 p.m. Sharla did so well. A wonderful birth. Oh, just so full of grace and She's such a strong woman. It was such a wonderful story and a discovery of God's goodness. It'd be awesome to tell you the story sometime. But, oh, so excited to be able to have this little one. Number four, and we believe the final child added to our family. The children are a gift, an inheritance, a blessing from the Lord. And we're so honored and joyful to have this fourth addition to our family. Every time that I have a child, I have an opportunity again to consider the gift and the blessing, the prophetic voice that the process of having children are. This birth was no different. God took me back to the beginning and reintroduced me in a wonderful way to his heart uh, revealed towards all mankind in the processes of reproduction. It's, I think, so interesting that within the church, one of the topics that is least talked about and least bold, least clear is the context of sex and reproduction within man and intercourse in covenant relationship, which I'm not sure why. If you think back to the beginning, God's creative muse within himself was, let us create man in our image and likeness. And out of that, God, who is a triune being, Father, Son, and Spirit, decided that the best representation of his person on earth would be through man and woman unified in covenant relationship. If you go back and you read your scripture that in the first chapter of Genesis, that the first mandate, the first command and direct enunciation to mankind was in the context of sex. <laughs> That's so interesting to me then that the church has been so squeamish to talk about sex and has relegated sex to the conversation and the main voice of the world that the world thinks all about sex and talks about it all the time. But yet here at the beginning of all creation, God says, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, and subdue it. <laughs> and if you look at the grand narratives of scripture that in Satan's rebellion in heaven, it says that God cast Satan to earth and has been making a, an example of him through very humiliating means from the beginning clear through the cross until now. <laughs> that God had an end goal, subdue the earth, that his glory would fill the earth as the waters covered the sea and that he had a three-step process to accomplish that subjection of the entire earth to the king dominion of God. And it was be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, and that will subdue it. Now there's a lot of other elements included within that. As man and women tended the garden and that it grew and multiplied, they would need more children. There'd be more people needed to tend the garden and to work it and to care for the animals and build civilizations and towns and to release the kingdom government of heaven on earth. So there's a lot more things than just sex, but sex is very central to the whole plan of God to move forward to bring a subjection to the entire earth to his kingdom rule. Be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, and subdue it. I think that's so beautiful in considering how in my covenant relationship with my wife, celebrating the beautiful relationship that we have together, that in the celebration of our covenant relationship and our unity, that our collaboration together in love produces children. That's 
so fascinating to me. But that here at the beginning of time, that we see God establishing the representation of himself on earth. That man is made in the image and likeness of God. He did so through man and woman and unified covenant relationship. And that the movement forward of the kingdom was to be in a context of multiplied life through a celebration of intimacy. <laughs> as, as we've engaged this last hurrah here with Mr. Jamin, that it's been so beautiful to consider again with God the beauty of his ways, that as he has called us to be image bearers of him, to be made in his likeness, that he's established that our forward progression in victory, in moving the kingdom of God forward, that it's to be in the context of covenant intimacy, unified by a work of God, that God makes the two one, and that spirit brings the full unity of all of the parts of the body. But that as we love one another, is God loved us. Jesus said, a new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you. But that as the love of God flows to one another through the power of the Holy Spirit in covenant relationship in the kingdom of God, that the result is reproduced life, not cloned expressions, not just production, but reproduction. That each person has their own unique person and free will, that there's an increasing growth in the creative expression of God released in man through his author ability. There is certainly no stale <laughs> petri dish movement forward in the kingdom of God. My <laughs> encouragement to you would be that as you approach relationship with God, that as you approach relationship with your husband, with your wife, as you talk to your children about the reality of what relationship in God looks like, that God could impart grace to you to be comfortable, to be confident in an explanation of God's plans revealed in the earth through sex. And our families, especially of those who are professing believers and who have said that they've been reconciled to God and indwelt by his spirit, there certainly should not be any squeamishness in us to practice a healthy sex life, to be empowered to talk to our children and to anyone who would ask, what are your thoughts on sex? <laughs> we would be bold, that we would be gentle, that we would be confident, that our tongues would be instructed to give people an encouraging word in the context of something that creates so much confusion and so much tension in relationships. If that hasn't been your experience, if it's something that you've always avoided like the plague and you don't think it's appropriate to talk about in church, especially with those who aren't married or are still single or are young, I would encourage you to go back and read in Genesis chapter 1 and see what it was that God talked about with man first. If <laughs> you subscribe to what I'm doing, hit the button, hit it, and then get it. Hit the bell as well so you're notified with the new content. And if you love this video, you didn't just like it, hit the thumbs down button. I pray blessings on your day. I love you guys lots. Mm. There's one more added to that number. <laughs> and I will see you in the next video.